Okay, so let's add and groom the fur for Fur Dude. We're going to start by going to a grooming desktop. Uh, there are the objects that we've created so far. They're all hidden. We're going to put them in a network box. We're going to call this the Rig and Animate Objects and put them off to the side. For the grooming, we're going to start by bringing back in uh, the cached out geometry that we had. So tab file. Uh, we're going to go to the geo directory, the walk directory, and we're going to bring in that walk cycle. Press enter to place it at the origin. And there we go. If we scrub through, we can see from frame 10 to frame 50, uh, it has what we need. We're going to call this the FD underscore anim. And if we double click to go in, we see we've got the walk uh, file node bringing in that that uh, that sequence. And then we've got a time blend, which we're going to delete. We're going to go tab, blast. And we're going to wire that in. And we're specifically going to Uh, get rid of the body, and we're going to de delete non-selected. So we're going to focus 100% the, for the moment anyway on the body, uh, because that's where we're going to attach the fur. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to alt-drag this to create a second version of this, and we're going to call this FD underscore rest. And this means we want to use the frame one rest geometry. So we're going to replace dollar F with just a one. And there we'll have a, a, a version of this character just standing there. And again, the delete node will get rid of everything except the body group. So we have two versions here. We have a standing one and we have an animated one. And that'll be part of our setup for the groom. We can groom on the one that the still image one, and then we can test and, and work with the other one as well. So now what we want to do is once we got those set up here, we want them easy to grab. We're going to go add fur. It's going to ask for the static uh, geometry to add fur. So we're going to select that and press enter. And then it's asked for the animated. We select this one and press enter. And there we go. We're going to get a little network built. And this network will have a number of elements which we can work with uh, to animate this. So let's move all of this on this side and the anim on this side. And so there's two versions of the groom. There's we can hide all of those and specifically look at the rest groom and make some of our decisions with this, which will then apply when we have the animated version as well. So that's the animated or deformed version. And here's the static version. So we're going to want to add certain features to this. So if we take this, we might want to do, I mean, one of the most obvious ones is, is tinkering with the length of the hair. So if we go up to the shelf tool, uh, for this particular desktop. There's a whole bunch of tools here, and one of them is the guide length. So the guides are determine, you know, where the real fur goes. Uh, you usually have fewer guide hairs than you do real hairs, and we can start to tinker with that here in terms of what we want. So we can have some randomization from 0 0.03 to 0 0.2, but we can also use a texture map for that um, and so in our texture directory, we have fur length. And specifically, this is designed to, uh, this was pre-painted on, on this character. Uh, it's specifically designed to get rid of it from places like the bottom of the feet and the lips and the inside of the eye. Um, so that was done with a texture map. So you can look at that texture map later, but for now we can play around with this. And we make the maximum length 0.15. So see the bottom of the feet and the lips you know, they don't have any fur. We don't have to worry about that. Then we're going to go in and we're going to add bend to the guides. So this is um, another procedural node that gets added to this. And we can play with things like an angle of 45. We can then add in things like frizz. Uh, let's make the frequency of that 15. Uh, that makes it look quite frizzy. Uh, the amplitude maybe go zero zero five, so it's, a, it's it's a little bit not quite as it's there, but it's not 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 too crazy. And then maybe do some randomization of zero point zero two. 
So you'll get different results on different hairs. So as you notice that as we do these things, everything has been added into this uh, network here. Now we're doing something here called clumping. So the clumping is when you take a whole bunch of hairs and group them together. And so we're going to change the clump size to 0 0.02. Um, and we're going to set up a tightness of 0 0.5. Now you don't see the clumping as much right now in the preview with the hair guides, um, but it will be there later when we take things further. You can also shape the clumps a little bit. So instead of them becoming really pointy, they can actually stay open for a while and only become pointy sort of near the end. So you have a control over the profile of that clump uh, using these nodes. Then we can go back to the object level uh, and then we can say, you know what, let's look at the animation and let's look at that same set of guides on there. And then we can also see the final the hair generation. So you feel the clumping a little bit more now when we've so this is where we've taken the guide curves which maybe have a you know a thousand curves and we've now really ramped that up to get all the hairs um, for the character so that's a preview and um, we can play with the density of the various things so the the guides we can add more of those if we wanted to have a little more control there so maybe twenty thousand um, and then you can play around with that so the next thing we're doing is adding in the ability to simulate the guides. So as the character moves, um, there'll actually be a little bit of bounce, a little bit of motion in there. So by default, um, you know, the hair is really falling down and it's quite uh, uh, droopy. Uh, but what we can do is we can go into the constraints on that and play around with different things. Like, for instance, the stiffness, uh, we can make that a little stronger so it doesn't droop so much. So maybe we make that five. Now if we recook that, um, you'll what you'll see is that it's the hair is more like it was before we put the, the sim into it. Um, but as you animate it, you're going to start to see us a, a bounciness to the, the hair uh, as a result of the sim. We're also going to alt drag over the animation rig um, and we're going to change this to FD collision because what we want is as we sim it, uh, we want things like the claws or the teeth or the eyeball. We want to make sure they're not not uh, causing a problem. So in this case, we're going to delete unselected and we'll probably add a couple other elements to this. So things like the tongue, we, we want to delete that and maybe some other elements like the upper teeth. Uh, the gums, those are they wouldn't collide anyway, so we don't really need them. So we can feed all of that. Uh, oh, we can go there, and we're going to go in and add a null because this doesn't get fed in um, by wiring things together. It's it's actually done a slightly different way. So collision out. So then, if we go back to the sim tab, uh, we can uh, choose vellum collisions external collisions which will be these elements that we're bringing in and what it'll do is give us a chance to put a, a connect to a SOP so we're going to go to the collision collision out accept and there we go so that's that's just a way of making sure that we're going to collide with the right things with that then what we can do is we can cache that out um, so we can do a frame range. Let's uh, delete channels on this and change it to 1 to 50. That's pretty much the range we've been using for this animation, and that would get us what we need there. Uh, save to disk. And then once that's been saved to disk, what we can do is uh, click the load from disk button um, and then this won't be simulating anymore. It will actually be ready to go. It'll be cached and we can scrub with that and you get a feel for it as you move through there. So this is the this gives us hair that we can use in our final rendering. Now if we turn off the guide hairs, we get a little better feeling for uh, what the hair is going to look like. Um, what we probably want to do is is maybe make a little more hair. Um, 
So instead of 139,000 hairs, um, we're going to put a million hairs in. That'll create a lot more density in there. Uh, few, few, fewer bald patches <laughs> uh, by doing that. And uh, that uh, he's a little scraggly, but uh, he's got his fur and he's, uh, he's happy to go. Now, the other thing we can do, uh, there's a bunch of other sort of options in here. One of the ones that's interesting is a clump crossover. So instead of the clumps all being completely isolated, you can go 0.5 and they sort of cross over each other and it, it creates a little more density that way as well. We're going to use 0.25 and that will, um, you know, make it work.